Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Um, this time we're looking at a C64C. Uh, you can see a little spider actually climbed into there. I'll have to get rid of that in a minute. Um, it's in pretty dirty condition. I'll clean it up. Um, it's described as not loading from tape or disc. Um, now I'll show you if I stick this cart in here. Um, just make sure it's not on. It's not on. Um, yeah. So all like that cartridges and things are working. Um, you know, I tried my old um, what's it called? Navy seals, that works fine. Um, let's just try. Let's try what else we could do. Joystick. One player. Ah, it's a bit jumpy, I'm not sure that's normal. But it's working, got sound, stuff, and input. If you try and load the tape on this, um, what happens is you get the blue screen, you know, when you do shift run stop and then it just waits and waits and waits, nothing ever comes up. Um, I'm not sure with the disc, I might try the SD to IEC actually. In fact, let's just do that now, I'll just connect the little wire up and give it a try. So the fact it's not reading tapes or discs, and I did test, just test it there with the SD to IEC, there wasn't much to show you, just a device not found, it was like there's nothing connected. Um, if you look at the tape port here, um, and the serial port, the only thing I can see they've got in common is this D4 on the tape port, which comes down to, that's this cassette, read which is connected to the data pin there which comes down all the way down here somewhere hang on where it goes Let's zoom out a little bit yeah it comes across here to this CIA which is what I expected sorry I don't know that was a moving all over the place there um, so this is uh, the schematics of the C64 it's saying the uh, U1 uh, I'm not sure that chip's going to correspond there, so I might just do a bit of um, connectivity testing there. It looks like it's going to... Um, which pin is it going to? It's hard to tell, actually. Do, do, do. It looks like it's going to that flag pin, pin 24, I think. Yeah, it looks like it's coming down here, going across to pin 24 on that CIA. So I'm just going to test on my meter to see which of the two CIAs, and I'm just going to socket it and swap out the CIA, I think. So following that schematic there, I've just tested from pin 24 on the uh, the first CIA, I think this one's marked U1, which I would have suspected was the chip, it isn't. Pin 24 goes to some of the pins on the user port here, which is what the other CIA does on the diagram. The CIA we're looking at has got a 3.3K, um, I think it is, pull down. Um, and I can show you that actually, if I just uh, put the meter on the screen here, put it in resistance mode. And if you just measure from ground to the fourth pin down, you see we've got about 3.3k there. So it's this one. This is one's the one that connects. The, it was just logical because it's near. They must have redesigned it. Uh, well, they did redesign it, didn't they, for the 64C? So um, yeah, pin 24 there is connected to one of the pins here, one of the pins on the serial port. So I'm just going to remove that chip, socket it, get one of my spares in there, and retest it. So I've got the chip off there now. Um, just needs cleaning up a bit. No damage or anything, that's, that's good. Quite small uh, solder points actually on the uh, 64C. Um, anyway, I need a 40 pin socket for that now, I think, so I'll just go and grab one. Right, well, as you can see here, it's loading now, it's working. Now, this isn't the CIA, it wasn't the CIA, it was, of course. Um, what I did here, uh, I'll show you a couple of things. Um, I swapped out that CIA. Now, this was a totally random, this is the sort of thing you shouldn't really do, is just go off on a tangent and assume that you're wrong with something. Um, now, I'd done some continuity, and I showed previously that we had the 3.3, it's a pull-up, I think, five, it's connected to the 5 all line, a 3.3k pull-up to pin 24 on here, which was the indication for me that this was the one related to serial and tape. Now, just for some reason, doubt in my mind, after changing that CIA over and it's still behaving the same, I thought, okay, well, let's just swap out the other CIA. Now, I didn't want to waste a socket, so I removed that CIA, put the CIA that was originally in here there, because I knew that that wasn't the cause, same issue, and thought, oh, God, you know, what's going on here? So, I mean, that was a bit of a silly thing, you realise. I shouldn't really needed to have done that. It's, I was just a bit tired when I was doing this, and... Uh, if I thought a bit more logically, I wouldn't have wasted the time taking that out because there's just no point, it's just not relevant. Um, it was good I did, I discovered a few things in between. That is, you can see here this has got a straight 6526 in there at the moment, it's not a 6526A. They will work in the C, uh, 64C. 
you know, from the original bread bin boards. I think they're rated for a higher voltage. I don't know whether they, they might even be absolutely identical. I don't know. I do know that the difference between a, you know, a bread bin and a 64C is this runs on 9 volts instead of 12. So you can't just swap things like the VIC and the SID around and stuff without doing modifications to drop the voltage accordingly. But certainly this, this old CIA works fine on this lower voltage C64C board um, and I found that with my other CIAs um, they all work fine on here but my original ones, I don't know where they've gone now uh, I think they're over here yeah, they're screwed black screen now this was interesting because I can't ever remember I probably did get black screens back in the day but you get black screens um, with these two so it, it's worth noting that and I'll stick an update on my black screen repair video that CIAs can give you a black screen um, and these don't warm up either, they don't get like incredibly hot, so oof, it's a bit of a difficult one when you get a black screen. Um, anyway, so the actual fault with this, it's one of these clamping diodes. It, I'll show you on the schematics in a second, I think it was, um, I'll just zoom in there, I've swapped up. Now, I've not looked up the diode, so I, I could have one that's in there that's not rated correctly, it might ultimately fail again. So I need to be careful with that. I will do a check later and see if I need to swap it out for another, a, a better one. It's it's a standard uh, like general purpose 1N4148 that I've put in there for the moment. Um, and it's in CR9. There are two related to the data signal, two clamping diodes. One, you know, from the 5 volt, one to the ground. Just to hold it within a predefined, you know, but that's what clamping. I've got to actually say, it's a sidestep a little bit here and say, it's thanks to retro game mods that I know about clamping diodes and how they're used. And as soon as I saw that arrangement there, I thought, hang on a minute, we've got some clamping diodes there right next to the serial port. Let's have a look at the schematics. Um, and I'll show you on the schematics here. Um, check out his channel, I'll put some links down below. Um, but these are the clamping diodes, and as you can see, um, you've got your serial port here coming in. The pin that I was looking at is this data pin here, which goes to pin 24 on the CIA. But there you go, there's the clue. You've got a, a diode at the top there to the plus five. That's one half of the clamp, and then the other one to the ground. And we had a short on CR, CR9, so effectively we were feeding five volts straight into the data pin. And anything else on there would just get sort of blurred away at a 5 volt level, probably. You know, I don't really know exactly what would happen to the level there. It'd be interesting to look at that on the scope. I might do that later. But, uh, yeah, anyway, so that was the solution. Um, that diode. Hard to believe. Um, but anyway, you can see it's pretty much loaded now. So, just see if this title screen comes up. Um, and that's probably going to be an end to this video, I think. There we go. Mission complete. So I just tested with the serial and the serial's not working either. Some of these other diodes have gone as well. It's like this whole block has gone. It's a bit of a mystery to me is how all of them would fail, but you've got a short there, short there. These are the two I've replaced. That's okay, it's a diode reading. Uh, hang on. That's a diode reading. That's a diode reading. That's shorted. Shorted. That's short. So we've got about another five faulty diodes there. Not sure what would cause all of those to fail like that. Um, be interested to know if you've got any ideas. Post in the comments below. Um, bearing in mind this is on the serial port, so something on the serial port has caused every single one of those to fail, um, or maybe not. Maybe they just fail because of I don't know usage, old age, design flaw. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I'll swap all those out and we'll test the serial port again. So there you go, you can see it's, uh, it's loading from the disk drive there now. Um, let's just go, I'm not sure which way to go now. It's, just, it's been ages since I've used this D64. There you go, sorted. Mission accomplished. Uh, anyway, so um, yeah, those are the diodes, and these are the faulty diodes. Uh, and if I measure these, the complete shorts in both directions, you know, obviously they're just shorted. Um, yeah, they seem to be all on the 5 volts, you know, between the 5 volt and the signal. So, I'm not sure how, you know, what's caused that. Um, potentially a faulty disk drive or something connected to it. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.